Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. Today's video is going to be an introduction to the 2D animation slash blender grease pencil. So if you're not familiar with the grease pencil then hopefully this video is for you. So the first thing we can do is go ahead and load up a new file. We can go ahead and select 2D animation and this will just give us a blank template we can work from. So again if this is the first time that you've seen all this it might be a little bit overwhelming but as with blender things become easier as you use them. So first let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in front of us. So this is our viewport or our canvas. We can scroll in and out using the mouse wheel. We can also use these widget tools over here. So scroll in and out, pan around. If you don't want to see these, if these are in the way, just go over here and turn them off. It's entirely up to you if you want to use them. So over here on the left, we have the tool panel and we have a bunch of different tools that we can use. Right now we're using the draw tool. And within this draw tool, we have a whole bunch of different brushes that we can use. And we'll take a look at those in a second. But we have a bunch of other tools as well, like the fill tool, the eraser, the tint tool, and a bunch more. And they're all pretty similar to photo editing softwares that you may have used in the past. Now for the brushes, we have a couple of different ways we can access them. We have this top bar up here. So we can go over here and change your brush. Change the material, the color, the size, the strength. Uh, we also have the advanced section, so we can play around with the samples. Uh, this will help smooth out your lines. You could also go to stroke, then increase smooth, iteration, subdivision, and a whole bunch more. For example, we could enable randomize, and then we can randomize any of these values here. So if we had color, or we can randomize the radius, the strength, we increase this jitter amount, and uh, we can get this jittery sort of line. So again, playing around with the different values will give you loads of different effects, uh, depending on what you're going for. So yeah, this is one of the places where you can change your brush settings. You could also go over here to this section, which is the active tool and workspace uh, settings. So you can go through, change your brush, uh, do all the things you did before. And if you're using a pen and tablet, you wanna make sure that you enable pressure for either the radius and or the strength. So right now I'm just using a mouse and it's very, very basic. <laughs> it looks terrible. Let me undo that. But if I start using a pen and tablet, we can see we get these nice smoother lines. Again, depending on how hard you press, you can get thicker lines. And people generally ask me, is it worth buying a tablet? And I think it definitely is. If you're doing a lot of uh, 2D animation or you know, grease pencil work, it definitely makes your job a lot easier when you're trying to create nice smooth lines. But at the same time, you don't necessarily need it. Change this from draw to edit mode. So I'm gonna click and select and then press G and I can move it around. And of course, being Blender, we can scale things by pressing S, R to rotate, and so on. Now, instead of just selecting the whole object, we can actually change the selection mode to the points. So I'll go over here, select this, and now select one of these points, and you can move this around. Maybe turn on proportional editing by pressing O. Select one of these points, and maybe rotate. If you didn't want it to rotate everything and you just want to rotate or manipulate the stroke, all you need to do is go over to your proportional editing settings and then click this here and then just choose connected only. And then now we do it, it'll just affect this stroke on its own. So again, you can jump into edit mode. Same thing with sculpt mode, actually. There's a bunch of tools that we can use to smooth things out, add some thickness. Um, uh, randomize and again depending on what you're going for there's a whole bunch of tools that you can use so yeah when it comes down to a, a tablet it's not necessarily needed but but it does make your job a lot easier and the tablet i'm using is a wacom intuos and it wasn't too expensive i did use a cheaper tablet in the past which was okay still works with blender but this one is a big improvement there'll be a link in the description if you want to check out the tablet i've got now let's just delete this i'm going to go to the eraser tool if we try to erase this, it kind of works like um, an eraser in the real world. But that would take too long to erase all of this. So what I'm going to do is just change the eraser type. So let's go over here. This is normally where your brush type would be. And each one of these are useful in different situations. But the one I want right now is erase stroke. So anything that comes into contact with this eraser will get deleted. So there we go. It's nice and easy. Now if we jump back to the draw mode, you'll notice when we draw it's a black color, but up here it's got a green color. You might also try and change the color down here, but nothing happens. And that's because of the paint mode. Currently we're using a material. So it's this icon here, we can see we have this selected. This means we're using a material. And we have a bunch of materials already pre-made. So if we go over to this option here, 
click this. We're currently using a solid stroke and we have these other ones, so let's just see what they do. So I assume they're squares rather than circles. If we zoom right in, they're probably squares. This one is a solid fill, so we can draw a shape and it will fill a color to that shape. And we also have a dots stroke, which will be the same as this solid stroke, except dots. So they're the basic materials that we get given. We can actually create more if we go to the materials tab down here. So these are the materials that we currently have. We can actually create a new one. Let's go ahead and click new. And if you want, go ahead and rename this to something that's more appropriate to what you're working with. I'm going to go to surface and we can see currently it's set to stroke. So basically we have a stroke. We have some options we can change if we wanted to, but I'm going to leave this as it is. And if we enable fill and then let's just change the color or something like that. And now we should have a black outline with a green fill and we do. So again, we can create a whole bunch of materials uh, for characters or whatever we're working on. And one more thing, instead of going over here to switch between them, you can use the shortcut, which is U. And this will bring up the change active material menu and go ahead and change it. So let me just delete all this now, it's getting in the way. So that's it for the materials. If you just wanted to change the color without setting up a material, you could just go over here to the vertex color, select this icon and choose a different color that you want. And there you go. Again, there's a lot more things we could go into um, maybe in a different video if you guys are interested. I also did a quick video showing how to import Blender's free brush pack. If you want to check that out, there's a link over here. So now let's check out the dope sheet window. We just drag this and bring this up. So this dope sheet is essentially uh, a layer management system. So if you use Photoshop or other programs where it uses layers, this is exactly the same thing. So right now we just have two layers. So we can see this is the first one and there's nothing on the second one. If we wanted to put something on this layer, we could select it. Let's just change the color and start to draw. Or if you want to use the shortcut, press Y and it'll bring up the change active layer. So we have loads of different options. Um, we can check out the opacity. It's also over here as well. Uh, we can use a mask, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, we can enable onion skinning. So if we have an animation, we will be able to see the lines on the next frame. We can also mute the visibility of the layer. Uh, this one, I believe, shows yeah shows all frames during the animation playback. Uh, we can also lock it into place so we can't move them around. Uh, so pretty much basic tools. But over here we have some more. We can change the blend type, but we can change this to anything you want. Uh, depending on what you use, you'll have different effects. As I mentioned, we have this option here, which is called masks. And this works like many photo editing software as layer masks. So let me just show you what I mean. And if we just draw a shape. So this is on the lines layer. Let's change it to the fills. And let's also enable the mask. Now we can open this up and it's going to ask us for which layer to affect. So if we click this plus button here, there's only one layer, but if you had a whole bunch of different layers, just choose the layer that you want to affect. Let's go ahead and change the color. And one more thing we need to do is bring this layer up. So I'm going to just click this button here. So now when we draw, it will only affect the original lines. As you can see, we can color this in. Uh, this probably would be more helpful if we go back to the lines layer. Let's change this to solid fill. Let's change the color to black. And then let's just draw a shape. Then if we go back to the solid stroke, change it back to fills. And if you want, change the color. So again, when we draw outside this area, nothing will happen. But when we draw inside it, we get this uh, effect. So that's it for the masks. Next, we have transform. Uh, this is basically a transform. We can move things around within the layers. So if we're not happy with things, we can move it around. Same thing with rotation and scale, pretty simple. Then we have adjustments. Again, we can add some tint uh, relations. This is pretty cool because let's say, for example, we have a set of eyes so, and let's go to object mode. Now, if we shift A, add an empty, let's say plane axis, that's fine. I'm going to press G and move this over here. Now, if we go back and select the stroke object, I go back down to relations, select this tool here and select your empty. Now, anytime the empty moves, it will move the eyes or what we could do, go back to the eyes. I'm just going to delete these circles here. So I'm just going to add a new layer 
I'm going to move this one down and add some more circles. It'll work. Let's go back to the first layer and make sure we get rid of this relations. And let's go to this new layer and add the same one like this. And if they move out of position, just press G and move them back over. And now we can actually animate these eyes moving left and right. By default, we already have the automatic keyframing enabled. So all we need to do is just move one frame over. So now you can see we're on frame two. And I did that by using the right arrow key on the keyboard. If you want to go frame by frame, that's fine. Just press G and move it over a little bit. Then press the right arrow on the keyboard and press G and just keep doing that. But instead, what I'm going to do is undo this, control Z. So instead of going frame by frame, I'm going to maybe jump eight frames forward. Then press G and I'm going to move this over on the X. Now when we go back, we can see it's animated. Now this video is getting on long enough as it is. Um, I just want to show you two more things. The first is the modifiers tab. And if you've been using Blender for a while, you'll know the modifiers has a whole bunch of different modifiers. But did you know you could actually use it for strokes? All you need to do is just go to modifiers and you have a whole bunch of different modifiers. So some of them you'll probably be familiar with, uh, others you might not be. But again, go ahead and just select one of them and depending on what you need, um, yeah, go ahead and use them. Uh, we have things like build, like so. So again, play around with these and play around with the settings. You'll get loads of different interesting effects depending on what you're going for. And the last thing I want to take a look at is the visual effects tab, which is right underneath it right here. And again, this works in the same way the modifiers do. You just go ahead and open it up and select one of these. Now these are obviously more stylized effects and you might not always use them, but some of them are really good. But for example, blur, Another good one is this rim effect. So it'll add rim lighting to your strokes. But yeah, you can add some rim lighting to your character. Talking about characters, shameless self-promotion, but they do a series on character creation. If you wanna check it out, there will be a link up here. Or if you wanna check out any of the other 2D animation videos, there will be a link to the playlist in the description. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the 2D animation slash grease pencil. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you want more videos on 2D animation, let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.